Hello, this is Overlord Bo, and we're back with another review video, and today we'll be looking at the new Russian Tier 10 CV, the Nakamov. Now, the Nakamov will be released in 10.10, .10, available to get, a uh, bill to be gotten in 10.10, .10, which will be coming up on November 10th for NA, and on EU, uh, November 11th. Now, before we start talking about the ship, we are going to go over the build real quick. So, for this build, you want to get the Air Groups Modification 1 with Aircraft Engines Modification 1 with the Air Aerial Torpedo Modification 1 for Torpedo Speed, uh, Torpedo Bombers Modification 2 for the Torpedo's Health, Flight Control Modification, and the Flight Control Modification 2. Uh, now, for the Commander, you can build it like this, having it with the Engine uh, Techie for the... Um, cooldown between uh, the engine boost, uh, air supremacy, improved engines, swift fish, torpedo bomber, site stabilization, proximity fuse, uh, aircraft armor, and survivability expert. Now if you are going to build this normally, uh, for the first, uh, for the build going, I would do like this, engine techie, improved engines, aircraft armor, survivability expert uh proximity f sorry you want to do this 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 and this that's how i would build it so if you're going along the line i would build it in that order now while we are going while uh while i talk about the ship and its aircraft you're you guys are going to be watching a replay so you guys can enjoy that all right oh wait i forgot to look at the armor real quick i apologize uh for the armor scheme which is right here as you can see it has a 19 millimeter armor right there with 125 125 side with 19 all the way around with an armor deck of 50 millimeters and with a superstructure of 13 so there is that so now we will go back and watch the video all right so the ship hull stats the ship has and this is going to be broken into two parts uh with the first part being about uh the ship hull and the second part will be out the planes so for the ship hull the survive now this the ship has survivability of 67,100 hp and now just as shown it has a 50 millimeter deck armor with 19 millimeter bow stern side armor it's extremely it has an extremely high citadel placement so it does have a citadel start slightly forward of the forward most a turret and ends just after the last a turret and with it having a highly raised citadel it means that the nakamov takes massive damage as she shows her broadside you definitely do not want to do that now her 50 millimeter deck armor is relatively weak it will protect against ap deck uh pens from dds uh, AP deck pens, uh, also from DDHE and most cruiser HE, but it'll fail against any HE um, pens from like a Midway, Hedenburg, BB, uh, any BBHE, or any other CV has HE pen higher than 50. Now for the secondaries, it has six quad 130 58 guns, two on the port, four on the starboard. They're pretty much Smolensk guns. I'm going to compare it to that. Now these do 1800 damage with an 8% fire chance and have a range of 7.3 kilometers. Now these are normal secondaries for CVs. They are pretty crappy. Uh, it might kill a 2 kilometer HP DD that's close to it, but that's really about out. And please, for the love of God, don't invest in secondaries. It only disappoint. It, it only <laughs> only disappointment awaits you. Now for the AE defense. This ship has 10 flak explosions, uh, with the furthest anti-air range being 77 DPM per uh, per second, and at four kilometers, uh, with the four kilometer mid range is 3 325 DPM per second. Now it does have a dangerous flak wall, though mid range AA is kind of unimpressive. It also carries an auto deploy fighter for defense. It is vulnerable to enemy CV attacks despite the relatively good AA defense. Now for the maneuverability. The ship has a top speed of 31 uh, knots with a turn radius of 1160 uh, meters and 17.1 rudder shift time. Like other CVs, it's absolutely horrible. Has difficulty outrunning surface ships due to its low top speed. 
And God help you if the autopilot makes you broadside of the enemy team. Now for its concealment, its base concealment is 14.7 uh, kilometers for the sea, and air is 13.4 kilometers. Now if you build all the way into the concealment, it goes to 11.2 kilometers and 10.2 kilometers for the sea and air respectively. Now this ship, if you build all the way in the concealment, is the second stealthiest CV behind the Audacious. It is fairly stealthy when built for conceal, but still be careful in case your autopilot tries to suicide your CV. Now that you've talked about the ship, we're going to talk about the plane stats. Now for the attack planes, the rocket planes. Now per each run, you have 8 squads per, per run with a 20 uh, hangar reserve for the attack fighters. Now the plane's restoration time is 70 seconds, so about 17 planes over the match. And the E's rockets do HE rocket damage, which is 4,500 with 40 millimeters of rocket pen. And the burn chance is 22%. Now, each run has up to 32 rockets, depending on if you have all the planes or not. And with the specialty about the with the Russian CVs is they get one massive strike instead of having individuals. So whenever you have a rocket or a torpedo or skip bombers, it has a massive drop per one and then they go back. Now continuing on, the, the aircraft HP for attack fighters, uh, attack planes are 1,090. Um, and, the t and the cruise speed is 168 knots and the max speed is 208 knots. Now due to the huge alpha strike, but can only launch one attack per squad, it does have a relatively low, low uh, uh, squad, but gets a rocket boost for the first 10 seconds of the flight. I'm sorry, I love relatively low speed. I apologize. Um, but it does get the first 10 seconds of rocket boost, which is very nice for its speed. Now, the planes are relatively fragile. Expect to lose about one or two planes before an attack. If you time it correctly, you can do, you can kind of not, you can only just lose about one or none at all, but it has to be pretty much perfect timing. Now, due to the very long rocket delay times, it can be difficult to hit maneuvering DDs. Now, these rockets are very effective versus pretty much all the ship class besides highly maneuverable DDs. Um, though, it is notably weaker versus tier 10 Russian cruisers, heavily armored BBs, and maneuvering DDs. Now, for the torpedo bombers. Now, for the torpedo bombers, um, there's only one attack strike per... Uh, per the squad now in the torpedo bombers there are seven total aircraft and there are 18 hangar reserves uh, for the torpedo bombers now the aircraft restoration for the torpedoes are 93 seconds and they regen up to 17 planes over the match now the torpedo damage is 5200 uh, per torpedo the speed is 41 knots the torpedo range is 6 kilometers with an arm, min arming distance of 0.83 kilometers. And the flooding chance is 45%. Now the aircraft HP per aircraft is 1470 with a crude speed of 124 knots and 162 knots for the max. Now with there being a huge alpha strike with it being only a launch one attack per squad, it does have a relatively low... Um, speed as well as the rockets but due to the rocket boost it does make it a little bit faster now due again to it being a very slow and fragile squad it'll lose about one or two per drops now it does have the second highest flood chance per torp behind the audacious but the slow torpedoes and long r times makes the the torpedoes hard to use now, these torpedoes are most effective versus slow moving and predictable ships, mainly battleships and large cruisers. Now for the skip bombers. Again, there's only one attack per flight, and each and each and there's eight planes per squad. Now there are in the hangar reserve there is 20 total aircraft, and the aircraft restoration time is 72 seconds. And this allows you to regenerate up to seven. Uh, up to 17 planes over the match. Now the skip bombers damage is 8700 per bomb with the HE skip bomber pen being 54 millimeters and a burn chance of 49%. It's a lot of fire. Now the aircraft HP 
um, is 1250 uh, per aircraft. The cruise speed is 122 knots and the max speed is 158 knots. Again, with the other, like the other squads, it has one huge alpha strike, but it can only launch this one attack per, per each squad or per flight. Now, it does have a relatively low squad speed, pretty much all of them do, but it gets a rocket boost for the first 10 seconds, which really helps you get, in get your planes in position kind of early. Now, it does have high surveillability due to the ability to launch these skip bombers outside of the mid-range AA, which you probably see me do a lot in this match. Trying to use, trying to get your attacks off as early as possible, as further as possible, definitely saves uh, your plane losses for sure. Now, the skip bombers are the easiest squad to use due to this fact. Now, the, the skip bombers are most affected versus any broadside ship, though less affected versus the Soyuz, Kremlin, and Yamato um, if you hit our deck pretty much. You have to hit the superstructure. Now, the, the skip bombers are the best armament to use against DDs um, due to how many there are and how... They're a lot more accurate, It's a, and they don't really have a delay. It's kind of just skipping. It's a lot easier for you to hit the DDs. Now for the plane consumables. Now, it does have a standard engine cooling with a 5-second active time, 80-second reload, and 2 charges. And of course, the standard engine cooling, it completely refills the engine boost gauge, which is really nice. Now for the standard fighter patrol, it's seven fighters per patrol. It will shoot down seven planes per intercept, as long as you have seven fighters per patrol. Pretty much if you have only five fighters because someone got shut down, it'll only shoot down five planes. Now these patrol radiuses are 3.5 kilometer patrol radius. You can build in this if you like, but I'd highly recommend you don't and just do the build we have here. But of course you can do whatever you like build wise. It is up to you and your play style. And these fighters are active for 60 seconds with a 10 second reload if the fighters go down and you get three charges. Now the Nakamov has the same standard fighter that all other non-German CV carriers uh, have. It also has the same engine boost that all other non-German CVs uses as well. Now let's talk about um, the oval impressions of this ship. Now, I feel like this has a very high skill floor and a high skill ceiling. As, you, as you're going to see during this match, it's these planes do not have a heal. Your ability to take as little damage as possible is the key to winning these, be able to keeping your squads. Because you don't, you only get about two, two and a half squads total for how much anti air uh, for. Two and a half squads per, like, the, the rockets, the torpedoes, and the skip bombers. So if you're just going in there full blazing and wasting the squad, you're going to run out really quickly. And these planes also do not have a lot of HP either, so you're also going to not be able to survive long if you're just going in there. Now, let's talk about this ship for randoms, ranked, and clan battles. Now, for randoms, I feel this ship is very good if positioned well. She can send out a con constant high damage strikes to quickly rack up damage and help your team get the victory. Uh, as you've seen here, as you're going to see, when I was forced to push in, as you're going to see later, this thing can just, just do so much damage over and over and over again. And this match was when I was just done uh, playing, uh, watching COS for the day, for the internationals, and casting all day. So I was extremely tired, and this was me on a more of an off day. If I wasn't so tired in this match, I could have easily done in the end about 310 or 320k at least. Now for ranked. I would find this ship to be very good and excellent um, as, uh, for ranked. It has potentially, depending if she can get close and spam high power strikes on important targets. Um, she's very, very strong. But the thing is, the FDR and Harkuri are, are likely to be better because they get ability to spot more. As you can see, this since the Russians focus on a single strike per squad, you're not able to stay and spot a target after unless you drop a fighter. But the thing is, fighters don't last very long. They don't really have a lot of health to spot 
really to keep spotting targets. It's not really their th like they're more meant to do spotting outside of an anti range of a target rather than being in close to spot unless it's a DD or a ship with low anti air protection. So that's why I would say the Yavdarn and Harkiryu are likely to be better. Now for clan battles. Um, for clan battles, I'd probably rate this as a, probably a little bit inferior to the Emelin, due to the fact these planes are pretty slow. Um, and so, assuming if in clan battles, if there is one coming up soon, which the, the upcoming tier 10 is non-CVs, so you're not going to be able to use this in them at all. Now, let's just say, assume the FDR and Hukuryu are banned, because pretty much every tier 10 clan battles that their CVs, Hakuryu and FDR get banned pretty quickly, always. So, let's just say that Hakuryu and Bray FDR get banned. Most likely, the Emblem is going to be the one that's used in maybe the Nakamov due to its high alpha. But due to its lack of ability to spot, it definitely would make it a very hard ship to be reliable for CVs. Now, the Nagabov planes are slow to rotate, so it'll be struggle to help off, help the off flank that you're not really able to. That's where the Elmlin kind of shines in its speed. The Elmlin's really good at getting planes around, while this ship has a lot of trouble getting planes on due to their slower speed. But for smaller maps, it might be more viable because its specialty is it gets rocket boost off the for 10 seconds off its first launch, so they go really fast in the beginning. So, like the previous Russian CVs, the Nakama focuses on high damage alpha strikes at the expense of using relatively slow and fragile planes. To make things matters worse, her attacks are hard to line up and alert opponents can mitigate most if not all of her damage if there's if they are knowing where the strikes are coming from however if the player can master these squadrons the nakama can prove to be one of the highest damaging cvs in the game each strike dealing catastrophic damage to the enemy in shockingly six quick succession as you can see here, I am launching strikes over and over and over and over again. And you're just seeing how much damage I'm doing. It's just it's just so much farm is going on right now. And that's kind of the specialty this ship has. When you're close to an enemy where you're behind an island where you can launch over, you can just consistently strike get them off these full strikes over and over and over and over. And that high alpha just packs a wall up on the enemy as you do this it just does so much damage as you can see right now i'm at 224 still going up still going still going and thanks to having the kutsunov captain skill going uh will of victory i also got a little heal on my ship as well which is pretty funny as well but sadly since i was pushed out into the middle i am a, i am going to go down so there isn't really much i can do here so, I did do my best, but again, it's just, it's just, it's just you know, it's, it is what it is, right? Like, the, the Shima snuck all the way around, he did a good job trying to get the CV kill, very well done by him in the end, very well done indeed. So in the end, I'm at 253k, 262k damage, that's pretty good for, that's pretty good, I'll take that, I'll take that indeed, but yep. But so that is the end of the replay. But again, I really enjoyed playing that match. It was a lot of fun. So for the final score, I had a glitch and I couldn't pull it up. So I do apologize for that. Now, here's the final score of the match. I did 262k damage with 25 torpedo hits, 40 skip bomber hits, 2 destroyed, 10 fires, 6 floods, uh, a few secondary hits, and 35 rocket hits a lot of damage very well done i was also top of the team in that match i believe i got around 17 or 1800 base xp i'm not super sure and since i forgot to show like the citadel where it was uh this is the citadel of the nakamov i did forget to show this at the beginning and i just wanted to make sure i showed it now this is the citadel of the nakamov this is why i was saying it was raised 
That is an extremely raised citadel, so you do not want to have your broadside shown at all. Because if you do, you are going to get slapped. But yep, that is my review of the Nakamov. I wanted to thank you all so much again for watching. If you guys have any questions or concerns, uh, definitely leave them down in the comments below. But I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you all later. Oh, big stretch, dude. Oh, big stretch, yeah.